The other uh, alternative is to start some sort of social process around that area to engage the community <laughs> to be stewards and increase the social value and eventually also the economic. So I think there are numerous ways <laughs> this technology can be used and to engage uh, the communities in urban landscapes. And <laughs> we are now working with the help of my PhD student Jeff Renara on doing several series of social economic maps of the urban landscape in Stockholm based on, <clears throat> for example, the, the views of the urban planners, the policymakers, the communities, school children, everyone can actually be engaged in, in uh, developing these maps. But I think, um, and I think this, this is one way how we can complement economic analysis and try to capture uh, the full range of values uh, uh, in the landscape. But I think it's easy to um, become Eurocentric and looking at the development of cities uh, in Europe and North America and perhaps forget that if we look globally, um, the most rapid urbanization is actually occurring in Africa. And there's some countries in Africa that have um, the record when it comes to uh, percent urbanization and it's mostly occurring in, in um, small and middle-sized uh, cities. And there are, of course, tremendous challenges, but also opportunities in, in that context. Particularly given um, when you look at the proportion poor in urban areas, which in some countries is um, more than 90%. And this is, of course, an enormous challenge. And even here, we need to integrate and understand the value of um, biodiversity and ecosystem services. So I, I have a PhD student doing studies of greenery in the slums of Bangalore, and it shows that it's quite important that um, of all the vegetation, the trees you find in slums of Bangalore, the majority uh, are used have an economic value. And either as a source of nutrition, uh, as for healthcare or or having um, uh, a diverse social cultural value. So green spaces and slums are often seen as and used as common property resources and sometimes extremely critical uh, in these areas. Another aspect when it comes to urbanization and poverty is of course um, food prices. And what you see here is the food price index. Um, and as you see, um, in 2008, we had a big peak, and it caused hunger riots around the world. Uh, today, we are back on similar high levels of, of food, food prices, and it's fluctuating around that area. Of course, um, for a poor person, um, this would mean many, very different things, whether you are a poor rural farmer with an access to market. This is actually good news because you, you're getting more higher price for your, for your produce. However, if you are urban poor, this is very bad news. Um, unless you have um, very good connections with, with the rural world, or as in Dakar, there is this huge um, investment in, in urban farming. And we can see that in many, many African cities. For example, in Dakar, 60% of total production of vegetables and 65% of total production of chicken in Senegal is produced in uh, the capital city. And of course, to have a sustainable urban farming, you need knowledge, and it has to be based on biodiversity and clean water and other ecosystem services. Uh, so here is a whole new complex of um, production systems we need to understand and develop. I think for the future, when it comes to um, the <coughs> urban landscape, um, we need to think really hard on, on building strategies to address climate change. And one of the most important <coughs> Climate change challenges uh, in suburban heat waves, and we already have experienced uh, 
laws in Europe. So, for example, in 2003, we had a major one which caused uh, an estimated 70,000 excess deaths uh, across Europe. And, of course, it's well known that uh, we have a cooling effect of trees in the urban landscape. And, and now, a um, large number of cities are looking into how could actually tree planting be part of, of an adaptation to climate change and reducing the risk of heat waves and also contributing to reducing um, the risk of flooding and uh, peaks in precipitation. And this is something that, that uh, now within the Climate Change uh, uh, Convention has been developed and, and labeled ecosystem-based adaptation to climate change, which a lot of citizens are looking into, and also discovering that there are all these advantages here, that it's often very cost-effective to use vegetation of trees, um, it focuses on city region linkages uh, and maintains ecosystem productivity, uh, engages local communities, <coughs> and also it, uh, results in protection from hazard events. And this was um, quite recently uh, codified in, in what is called a Durban Adaptation Charter for Local Governments uh, and adopted in November 2011 in Durban. There are three important pillars in that, among several others. One is ensure that adaptation strategies are aligned with mitigation strategies, uh, prioritize the role of functioning ecosystems as core municipal green infrastructure, and creation of a local adaptation thematic window in the Green Climate Fund. And as someone uh, actually addressed this and, and said, to address and adapt to a problem arising from increased levels of CO2 in the atmosphere, we can't use strategies and technologies that continue to add CO2, for example, conventional engineering solutions. Instead, we need low carbon solutions, and it's here where cities increasingly are looking for the role ecosystems could play in adaptation. And looking ahead um, for the Rio meeting uh, in a few months, there will be several activities related to the role of, and I would say the new role of local governments in implementation of, of the Rio Conventions. And uh, the Convention of Biological Diversity have already reached out to local governments and, and started to uh, include and collaborate in the implementation of the CBD Convention. And the same, uh, same uh, trend you can see when it comes to the Climate Change Convention. And I think combining CBD at the Climate Change Convention on a local level makes a lot of sense and also uh, would, would actually bring up biodiversity ecosystem services high on the agenda. And for example, cities will discuss how to increase production and ecosystem services through green infrastructure investments. Cities will address climate change challenges through ecosystem based adaptation strategies. And cities will contribute. Uh, and also discuss how they can contribute with incentives for better stewardship of distant landscapes and seascapes. And of course, this, the last point is really important because it's I, cities are not islands. They are all part of a, of a global production system which uh, they have to be part of uh, with a wise stewardship. Okay. To bring more in-depth understanding on these issues, uh, CBD and the member states requested uh, that an assessment to be done uh, and <clears throat> named cities and biodiversity outcomes. This is a global assessment of the links between organization, biodiversity, and ecosystem services. And this has been launched, and the, the mission of this uh, global assessment is to synthesize how organization impacts biodiversity and ecosystem change in terrestrial, freshwater, and marine systems provide an overview, analysis, and response to knowledge gaps in our understanding of organization processes and its multiple effects on social ecological systems, and address how urban biodiversity and ecosystems could be used, restored, and created in innovative ways to reduce vulnerability and enhance natural capital and resilience. How cities can move from being just consumers to also generate multiple ecosystem services. The synthesis of this will be pre-launched in, in the EU in June and <coughs> delivered to, to the COP meeting in Hyderabad in October. Underpinning the synthesis will be a, a scientific um, foundation 
a more scientific book that will be published in 2013. I will end by saying that in Europe, we are now um, organizing ourselves in, in a project called Urban Biodiversity Ecosystem Services, which is financed by uh, the Biodiversa Network and include nine uh, research uh, institutes across Europe where we actually will focus very heavily on get the better understanding of urban biodiversity ecosystem services, how we can map them, quantify them, value them, value them, and incorporate them in urban planning in the European context. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.